Each year, millions of tons of graphite are mined and fed into industrial production worldwide. It is a foundational material present across many critical aspects of modern life, from traditional industries to emerging energy technologies. To meet this growing demand, factories must process natural carbon ore on a massive scale, removing impurities while tightly controlling composition and material uniformity throughout the refining process. Every stage is designed to ensure that the final graphite delivers consistent performance, suitable for applications that require long-term reliability. But how do raw blocks of ore become an industrial material that meets such strict requirements? That journey begins at the very first stages of the graphite production process. Each year, the global graphite market generates more than 20 billion USD, yet to obtain roughly 1.3 million tons of purified graphite, factories must process tens of millions of tons of raw ore. A single electric vehicle battery alone requires about 110 to 220 pounds of graphite, underscoring why this material is considered a strategic link in modern technology. Beyond its role in energy storage, Graphite stands out for its rare ability to withstand extreme heat, remaining stable at temperatures above 6,500 degrees Fahrenheit. This exceptional thermal resistance is what makes graphite indispensable in lithium-ion batteries, industrial electrodes, and systems designed to operate under sustained high-temperature conditions. As demand accelerates, global graphite supply remains heavily concentrated in China, India, and Brazil. From rock deposits that appear ordinary at first glance, graphite is quietly shaping supply chains and influencing the pace of the global energy transition. And that story begins with its journey through extraction and refining. The journey of graphite extraction, natural graphite, begins at mineral deposits scattered across ancient geological regions where the Earth's crust has undergone hundreds of millions, and in some cases billions, of years of transformation. Graphite ore bodies are typically embedded in carbon-rich metamorphic rock, found in highland areas, plateaus, or long-established mineral belts. From these locations, ore is extracted using two primary methods, depending on the depth and geological conditions of the deposit, underground mining and open pit mining. In underground mining, human labor plays a central role throughout the entire process. Workers are organized into specialized teams and descend into the mine via vertical shaft elevators or along inclined tunnels equipped with rail transport systems. Each shift unfolds in an environment with no natural light, high humidity, and a stable yet oppressive temperature, requiring strict adherence to safety protocols at all times. Before any drilling or blasting takes place, crews inspect ground supports, measure gas concentrations, and ensure that ventilation systems are operating continuously. During extraction, they operate drilling equipment, place low-intensity explosives, then load and roughly sort the ore directly inside the tunnels. It is this tightly coordinated balance of skill, discipline, and field experience that allows operations to maintain a steady extraction pace. Lower in output than open pit mining, yet capable of recovering the most valuable graphite ore bodies. Today, open pit mining dominates the graphite industry, accounting for an estimated 75 to 80% of total global natural graphite production each year. This share has continued to rise over recent decades as demand for graphite in batteries, metallurgy, and industrial materials has expanded rapidly. The extraction process begins with stripping away overburden using excavators, bulldozers, and heavy haul trucks. Once the ore-bearing rock layer is exposed, drilling systems create holes typically ranging from 16 to 33 feet deep, arranged in precise patterns to control rock fragmentation. Explosives are then loaded in carefully calculated amounts, designed to fracture the host rock while minimizing damage to the graphite flakes themselves. After blasting, the ore is excavated, roughly sorted on site, and transported directly to crushing and beneficiation facilities. Thanks to a high level of mechanization, 
Open pit operations achieve significantly higher productivity with costs 30 to 50% lower than underground mining, while allowing large volumes of ore to be processed in a short time. The critical factor in open pit graphite mining lies in controlling fragmentation quality. Excessive blasting can shatter graphite flakes, sharply reducing their commercial value. As a result, blasting techniques, loading sequences, and haulage routes are all carefully optimized to preserve flake size and structural integrity. This integration of geology, machinery, and precise technical control has made open pit mining the dominant method in the modern graphite industry. After extraction, raw graphite ore is sent to the crushing stage, the first step in freeing graphite flakes from the surrounding host rock. The objective of this process is not to grind the material as finely as possible, but to break the enclosing rock while preserving the size and integrity of the graphite flakes. Because graphite's value is directly tied to flake size and structural condition, every crushing parameter is tightly controlled. The ore is typically processed through multiple crushing stages, beginning with jaw crushers or cone crushers to reduce large rock fragments. It then moves to roll crushers or ball mills operating at much gentler settings. Between each stage, the material is screened and classified to remove particles that have already reached the desired size, preventing unnecessary overcrushing. Rotation speed, applied pressure, and residence time inside each machine are carefully adjusted to minimize flake breakage. This stage is decisive. Even a small deviation in crushing conditions can significantly reduce the commercial value of an entire batch of graphite ore. In the mixing stage, the graphite powder produced after crushing is fed into paddle shaft mixers, where it is gently blended with water and a small amount of additives. The goal is not to apply strong shear forces, but to form a uniform slurry while preserving the natural flake structure of the graphite. Slowly rotating shafts fitted with highly wear-resistant paddles help break apart agglomerated powder clusters and distribute particles evenly throughout the material. The quality of this mixing step has a direct impact on the efficiency of all downstream processes, especially flotation and impurity separation. Once the mixture has been homogenized into a slurry, the graphite water suspension is fed directly into the flotation stage, the most critical separation step in the entire refining process. Here, graphite's natural hydrophobic property is exploited to distinguish it from the remaining gang minerals. When fine air bubbles are injected into the flotation cells along with a precisely dosed amount of flotation reagents, graphite flakes attach to the bubbles and gradually rise to the surface, while most heavier minerals sink to the bottom. Flotation is not carried out in a single pass, but through multiple successive stages to progressively increase purity. Every parameter, from bubble size and agitation speed to slurry residence time, is carefully adjusted to preserve flake structure and minimize the entrainment of impurities. The graphite-rich froth is then skimmed off, marking the transition from raw carbon ore to graphite with high industrial value. After flotation and preliminary dewatering, graphite still retains a high level of moisture and is not yet stable enough for classification or packaging. At this stage, the material is fed into a rotary drying drum, a large cylindrical unit that rotates slowly and operates continuously. As the drum turns, internal lifting flights repeatedly raise the graphite and let it cascade downward, keeping the material loose, preventing clumping, and ensuring even exposure to the hot airflow. Heated air is blown through the drum to evaporate the remaining moisture bound to the graphite. Drying temperatures are typically maintained between 212 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit, high enough to remove water efficiently while remaining well below the threshold that could cause oxidation or embrittlement of the graphite flakes. Drum rotation speed and residence time are adjusted according to incoming moisture content and particle size, allowing water to migrate gradually from within the flakes without inducing microcracking. As graphite exits the drying drum, it reaches a stable moisture level and becomes free-flowing and uniform in mass. 
This condition is essential for accurate classification, safe transport, and the preservation of consistent quality throughout subsequent refining steps and industrial applications. At the final stage of the production line, graphite enters a critical phase, packaging and transportation. At this point, the material is fully prepared to enter the global distribution system. Fine graphite powder is packed into multi-layer bags designed to resist moisture and limit dust dispersion, helping preserve consistent quality throughout storage and long-distance transport. At an industrial scale, a single facility can produce and package dozens of tons of graphite each day, with shipments leaving warehouses continuously to feed international supply chains. From here, graphite consignments move into the global logistics network and are delivered to key markets across Asia, Europe, and North America, where graphite has become an indispensable link in many modern industries. Once graphite has reached stable purity and moisture levels, it enters a completely different process, the production of pencil cores. At this stage, graphite is no longer judged by output volume or flake size, but by its ability to produce smooth, consistent lines with controlled darkness. The material is ground to an ultra-fine powder, often down to particle sizes of just a few microns, ensuring that writing strokes remain free of grit or interruptions. The graphite powder is then blended with refined clay and water. The clay acts both as a binder and as a hardness regulator. Higher clay content produces harder cores with lighter lines, while higher graphite content results in softer cores with darker marks. This balance forms the basis of the grading system ranging from 9H to 9B. The mixture is kneaded thoroughly until it reaches a uniform, plastic consistency, then fed into extrusion machines that press it into long, straight cores with precisely controlled diameters. These cores are cut to standard lengths and fired in high temperature kilns to remove residual moisture, increase mechanical strength, and lock in the internal structure. After firing, the cores are treated with wax or oil reducing friction during writing and improving resistance to breakage. From an industrial carbon material, graphite has now become a finished pencil core, small, precise, and engineered down to every aspect of writing performance. After the pencil core is completed, the next stage is core bonding, the step that connects the writing material to the wooden body and ultimately determines straightness, durability, and writing feel. Wooden slats, typically made from kiln-dried cedar, are precision milled with longitudinal grooves whose depth and width match the core diameter exactly. A thin layer of water-based adhesive is applied inside each groove, strong enough to secure the core while preserving the natural elasticity of the wood. The graphite cores are then placed into the grooves using automated alignment systems that ensure perfect coaxial positioning, preventing breakage during sharpening. A second wooden slat is laid on top, forming a wood core wood sandwich, which is pressed under uniform pressure so the adhesive bonds evenly along the entire length. The bonded blanks are then cured under controlled conditions to allow the glue to reach optimal strength before moving on to shaping and surface. Finishing. At this stage, even a minor deviation can result in pencils that break easily or write inconsistently. Making core bonding a process that demands exceptional precision and strict quality control. After the wood core blocks have been bonded and pressed to stability, they move into the adhesive curing stage. The bonded blanks are placed in drying chambers at moderate temperatures, allowing the water-based glue to fully cure and form a stable bond between the graphite core and the wooden body. This drying process is carefully controlled to prevent wood warping or internal stresses that could shift the core off axis. Only once the adhesive reaches the required strength are the bonded blocks released for the next step in ensuring each pencil will retain straightness and durability during use. The long bonded strips are then fed into the cutting stage where they are separated into individual pencil blanks. Multi-blade saws or specialized milling machines slice the blocks into dozens of rough pencils, each with a standardized length and a core precisely centered inside. Accuracy at this stage is critical. Even a slight deviation in the cut can push the core too close to the surface, 
making the pencil prone to breakage during sharpening. After separation, the rough pencil blanks pass through edge truing systems and axial straightness inspections, removing any pieces with minor geometric deviations. This cutting stage does more than define the pencil's initial shape. It directly affects strength, sharpenability, and overall writing feel. After the pencil body is fully formed, tip sharpening becomes the final step in the pencil manufacturing process. The pencils are fed through automated sharpening machines, where the wood is precisely tapered to expose the graphite core at a uniform length and angle. Grinding speed and applied pressure are carefully controlled to prevent chipping or cracking of the core, while ensuring the tip is sharp, straight, and stable during writing. Finally, finished pencils are packed into boxes and stacked into larger cartons before being transferred to distribution warehouses, where shipments are allocated by region and market. From graphite deposits formed hundreds of millions of years ago, this carbon material has passed through a fully integrated production journey, mining, crushing, mixing, flotation, and drying, to become a purified, stable material with high industrial value. This precisely controlled process not only supports major industries, but also enables some of the most familiar applications in everyday life. Most notably, the pencil core, where graphite is engineered down to every aspect of writing performance. If you'd like to explore more applications of graphite or dive deeper into the refining and manufacturing technologies behind everyday materials, follow the channel and leave a comment with the topic you'd like to see next.